In today's video, I am going to talk to you about a couple of different ETFs that if I was a millennial just starting to invest, these are some of the ETFs that I would be considering myself. Let's get down, let's check these out. So as a millennial, we would all be looking at marijuana stocks, at least if you want high growth in my own personal opinion. And now this ETF is actually one of the better ones around in my own personal opinion. So what is Horizons Marijuana Life Science Index ETF, HMMJ, on the stock market? Well, it currently trades at $12 per share at the time of making this video. And it generally has roughly a 4-ish percent dividend, but that can jump as high as 10%. It really depends on the quarter. Now, I'm going to get into that just a little bit later and how they pay a dividend because most marijuana companies do not pay a dividend. So it's actually quite interesting how this one works. This ETF has an average volume of 600,000 shares per day, which means that it's easy to get in and out of. However, it does have a higher MER at 0.75%. Now, you may look at its five-year chart and say, oh, oh, ouch. Well, it's actually not a five-year chart, even though you may type in five-year, because it hasn't really been around for five years. It's only been around since 2017. Now, it did have this initial boost, which all marijuana stocks had because, of course, that was roughly around when legalization was happening in Canada. Then, at this point, it dipped because, of course, there was a lot of different news sources saying that these people who are buying marijuana are not going to be buying it from the stores legally. They're going to be buying it illegally through their old people that they used to black market used to buy from. Well, and then they were wrong. And then at this point, they started saying, well, actually, the market in Canada isn't as big as we thought, and it started to decline. Well, guess what? It had roughly a double bottom, a very long drawn out double bottom, but it's slowly started to creep back up recently. Why is that? Well, actually, the reason is because they are legalizing it now in the United States. Now, there are different states that are legalizing it. However, at the federal level, apparently the senators have been saying that they want to legalize marijuana at the federal level at least by the summer. So this will have a little bit more time to run, but I personally think that it's going to run just a bit. And then it's going to have a little bit of a pullback, just like we had here, mainly because it's going to take some time to be able to get the marijuana industry rolling in the United States, getting stores. I know there's lots of states that already have them, but most states don't. So it's going to take some time, but there is a bright 10-year future if you can lock up your money for 10 years. Now you may, may be saying, well, they pay a dividend, but no marijuana company pays a dividend. How is this possible? Well, actually, as you can see, the prices vary on the dividend all the time. It changes. It goes up one quarter. It goes down another quarter. It goes up. It goes down. It goes really far down. Why is that? Well, actually... It's very interesting how this ETF actually works because you're investing in the companies long term. However, this ETF rents out the shares so that they can be shorted, which means that people are basically borrowing the stock and paying an interest on borrowing that stock to sell that stock that they borrowed. That's called shorting. And then what they're hoping for is to buy it back at a lower price and then give back the share with the interest. Well, guess what? You make a dividend off of that. So even though you are essentially buying the shares to borrow them out to sell them short, which would then draw down the price, you're making a dividend off of that interest you get that share back. Of course, when you get that share back, the stock prices of those stocks will go back up. And then you're making that money and you're still making a dividend. It's kind of a good way to play a market, especially in a segment where there's a lot of shorting happening. Will high dividends happen in the future? Who's to say, but as of right now, I would assume that when the stock prices are starting to accelerate like they have been, there's going to be heavy shorting, which makes that dividend go higher. When the marijuana stocks start to being part of the main market, what you're going to see is the lower dividends, but it's still nice to have dividends. 
Some of the larger holdings that this ETF has is Afria, Canopy Growth, GW Pharmaceuticals, Kronos, a lot of good Tilray, a lot of big holdings. Organigram is another one. Now, on its own, I personally, out of all of these, I own shares of Tilray as well as Organigram. I used to have a lot of Canopy Growth. However, I have sold that since then. I shouldn't have, but I did. Basically, the long story short with Canopy Growth, I originally had it at just over $2 per share. Sold it at 5 got bought it back bought it back when I went lower sold it at 10 and then I just kept on going back and forth but I haven't bought or sold it since it was $18 a share the next ETF that's very interesting is the ZWK it's the BMO cover call US Bank ETF basically it's an ETF that holds US banks but it's a covered call strategy it's an option strategy where you can for example have a hundred shares of let's say Bank of America just as an example and then you basically sell a call option against those 100 shares, you get paid a premium, and if it doesn't hit, let's say, $40 a share, you keep that premium, you keep your shares. However, if the stock price accelerates quickly, you will lose those shares. However, you still earn that premium and you still shall sell the shares at what they were whenever you sold that call option. It's very long drawn out. I hope that quick explanation explained it. If it didn't, don't worry. There's lots of information on the internet about it. This one currently does pay a 7.5% dividend and it does have a considerably high MER of 0.65%, which basically an MER, if you don't know, is if you put $100 into this ETF, it will cost you roughly 65 cents per year for them to invest your money. Now I do and I will let you know that I do have a disclaimer to say about this ETF and that is I do own quite considerably amounts. Quick disclaimer, I do own quite a few of these shares of this ETF and I did grab them at the 10% yield back a few months ago when the share prices were a bit lower. But the reason why this one's good, especially if you're a millennial, is because it does have a history of stock equity growth, but also a heavy history of high dividends. So if you were to reinvest those dividends into either other ETFs, other stocks, or back into this ETF, you could have massive growth over the next many years. And this is what I mean by stock growth. So it started here. It's not a very old ETF. It started just over $30 a share. It did get up to $32.50 or $32.60 in that range. And then it did plummet at COVID. And then it has recovered nicely since. It does also have a nice history of dividend growth, which is beautiful to see. Its largest holdings are Ameriprise, as well as many other massive corporations like Keycorp, Fifth third bank corp svb as well as jp morgan citigroup goldman sachs and many others another great investment option is o shares global internet giants this is a global investment strategy when it comes to internet stocks this one does not however pay a dividend but it does have massive growth and it also does have a nice share volume to get in and out quite easily the growth on this ETF is absolutely insane, especially recently since the coronavirus pandemic. It has gone from $25 to over $60 a share. It has pulled back since, but after it gets into a consolidation period, that's when I would start buying. Its largest holdings are Amazon, Alphabet, Tencent, Alibaba, Microsoft, Facebook, and many others, Shopify being Canadian. And the final ETF I'm going to talk to you about today is VOO. Another option is SPY, but I personally like VOO just a bit better because it does have a 0.02% dividend higher on its yield, which doesn't mean anything unless you start investing a ton and ton and ton of money into it. However, volume is high at almost 4 million shares traded per day, and its expense ratio is 0.03%, which again means that if you put $100 into this, ETF, you would only be paying three cents every single year for them to manage your money. And you're going to mirror the market because that's what this does. As we can see, it does mirror the market and anytime there's going to be any big downturns, you're going to see that in this ETF. However, as long as you believe that there's not going to be any long drawn out 40, 50 year recession that these crazy people say it's going to happen, which is not going to happen, then you should invest at least 
your first five to ten thousand dollars into this ETF. It does pay a dividend every single quarter. Now, just as a disclaimer, this is very heavy on tech stocks. However, so is the overall market. So, Apple being the largest company in the world, you're going to see any of the largest companies in the SPY or in the as in the S&P 500, you're going to see those stocks pop into the top 10. After the massive tech companies, we're going to see Berkshire Hathaway, JP Morgan, Johnson & Johnson. However, yes, seven out of the top 10 companies are massive tech companies, and that is why they are being heavily scrutinized right now by the US government. These companies alone, right here, have a net worth more than most companies. It's crazy. Anyways, I hope that you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button and subscribe. Up in this corner is another video that you might like, as well as over in this corner, you will see the subscribe button. My camera died, so you're not gonna see my face at the end of this video. I hope that you have enjoyed. Hit that like button, subscribe. I'll see you guys again next time.